हेलो गाइज होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल एंड आर सेफ एंड हेल्दी एंड आई डू अग्री द पास्ट फ्यू मंथ है टफर ऑल ऑफ अस बट लेट्स जस्ट बी पॉजिटिव एंड इन होप दैट द बेस्ट इज यू कम सो कमिंग टू माई सेल्फ आई एम दीक्षिता आकुला अ फर्स्ट इयर मेडिकल स्टूडेंट ऑफ प्रतिमा इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेज बाय नाउ यू मस्ट हैव गेस दैट टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट बीट ऑक्सीडेशन बट टू मेक बीट ऑक्सीडेशन अ लिटल मोर इंटरेस्टिंग आई एम गोइंग टू शेयर विद यू गाइज अ केस स्टडी which is actually a true incident and has been published and even documented so the person whom we are going to talk about is a young girl aged 23 years at the time of documentation the earliest memory she has of the beginning of her illness was when she was 14 she remembers waking up in the middle of the night not being able to move since then her illness has progressed into daily severe muscle pain episodes where the pain starts at the bottom of her legs and grows all the way up to the jaw these episodes render her immobile for hours her urine is pitch black and very frequently she had to be admitted to the hospital she expresses that any increase in physical strain or exercise will make her symptoms worse each time she is admitted physicians are unable to find a cause for her pain She has been tested for rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, multiple sclerosis and even autoimmune diseases with all negative results. One big medical anomaly that physicians are able to record during her visits is a rise in her creatine kinase levels. Now let me remind you that creatine kinase is a muscle protein that at this point is leaking into her body at enormous levels. Her highest CK level recorded during an episode was 57000 units per liter. in comparison to the average levels being around 22 to 198 units per liter when a story was published by a physician they received thousands of responses on possible diagnosis based on a symptoms the most common response was the possibility of a metabolic myopathy that translates to a muscle illness and are usually caused by the muscles inability to break down nutrients and in turn the muscles began to break themselves down for energy usage when her blood and urine were analyzed they showed that she had a normal metabolic gene profile resulting in the elimination of many possible metabolic disorders but when her genome was sequenced with the hope of a final result and after months of wait finally the diagnosis results stated that she has a deficiency of carnitine palmitoyl transferase 2 so finally the whole thing has been resulted in cpt2 deficiency Now, what is CPT2, and what does it have to do with beta oxidation? CPT2 shares structural elements with other members of the carnitine acyltransferase protein family. Now, coming back to beta oxidation, we all know that fatty acids are major sources of energy in humans. Almost all tissues use them as energy sources, but there are a few exemptions such as red and white blood cells, nervous tissue, retina, and adrenal medulla. Fatty acids are stored as triacylglycerols tags in adipose tissue. When there is an energy requirement, these stores of tags are released into circulation. Then they are transported to various tissues based on the requirement. During this process, the tags are bounded with albumin and are taken up by peripheral tissues where they are oxidized to release energy. And here, the principal oxidative pathway is beta oxidation. where there is sequential removal of two carbon units as acetyl coa and the cleavage takes place at the beta carbon of the chain and hence the name now to understand better the whole process has been staged into three parts activation of fatty acid transport of the activated fatty acid into mitochondria mitochondrial beta oxidative reactions but before that there is an important point to remember that is If in the case of fatty acid oxidation it takes place inside the mitochondria and fatty acid synthesis takes place outside the mitochondria but these two processes are in tandem Now coming to activation the fatty acid is activated to its acyl CoA derivative and the whole reaction of activation takes place in the cytosol and it is catalyzed by acyl CoA synthetase also known as thiokinase but what if the resultant fatty acyl coa molecule is reversed back into its fatty acid molecule the answer is no it won't happen and the reaction is irreversible 
since the pyrophosphate molecule is converted into two molecules of inorganic phosphate at the cost of high amount of energy being used. Hence, the reaction is also termed as pyrophosphatic cleavage of ATP. Now, coming back to the second stage, that is transport of the activated molecule into the mitochondrial matrix. Again, this process occurs in three steps. Step number one, the activated fatty acid molecule now reacts with carnitine in the presence of an enzyme called carnitine acyl transferase 1 or CAT1 to form fatty acyl carnitine. This process is the rate limiting process. Step number two, the fatty acyl carnitine is transferred inside the mitochondrial membrane by antiport mechanism where the entry of acyl carnitine is linked to the exit of carnitine. And this process is mediated by an enzyme called as carnitine transferase. Step number three. Now, once inside the mitochondrial matrix, the acyl carnitine reacts with acyl synthetase in the presence of an enzyme called as carnitine acyl transferase 2 or CAT2. Now, the whole transport process is named as carnitine shuttle because of the participation of a transport carrier called carnitine. But why do we need carnitine and why can't the fatty acyl CoA directly enter into the system? That is because the inner mitochondrial membrane is impermeable to our fatty acyl CoA molecule. Now, once inside the matrix, the fatty acid undergoes reactions, so the name beta oxidative mitochondrial reactions, which is the third and final stage. The molecule undergoes a series of four reactions being oxidation, hydration, oxidation, thiolysis which is nothing but cleavage. Now coming back to oxidation, our fatty acyl CoA molecule reacts with an FAD molecule in the presence of acyl CoA dehydrogenase to form enyl CoA. Now this enyl CoA molecule undergoes hydration in the presence of enyl CoA hydratase with the addition of a water molecule to form 3 hydroxy acyl CoA. Now this 3 hydroxy acyl CoA undergoes oxidation in the presence of dehydrogenase with the addition of NAD plus taking part in this reaction to form 3 keto acyl CoA. Now this 3 keto acyl CoA undergoes cleavage in the presence of thiolase. And after undergoing cleavage, the 3 keto acyl CoA molecule results in a single acetyl CoA molecule and acyl CoA shortened by two carbon atoms. Now this process takes place until there is only acetyl CoA molecules left. Moving on to the next important part that is explaining how energy is produced by oxidation of a fatty acid, we better take a look at the energy yield of palmitic acid. For one molecule of C16 palmitic acid to completely degrade, seven such degradation cycles take place Till there are 8 acetyl CoA molecules left and uh, each acetyl CoA molecule produces 10 ATPs and during a single cycle of degradation 1 FADH2 and 1 NADH are produced and since there are 7 cycles so 7 molecules of FADH2 and 7 NADH are produced and each FADH2 molecule produces 1.5 ATPs and 1 NADH produces 2.5 ATPs. So the total energy yield is 108 ATPs, but the net ATP yield is 106. Now where did the two ATPs go? Remember, we used ATP in the initial activation of our fatty acid molecule. An important part of beta oxidation is its regulation because any defect here can lead to disorders. So now regulation of beta oxidation, it actually takes place at two levels. Number one, supply of fatty acids and number two, entry of fatty acids into the matrix. Now to understand this and remember it better, let us imagine that uh, you are traveling and you are hungry. So you visit a restaurant and to satisfy your appetite, you have to eat food. And for that, the waiter has to bring you your order. Now let's compare this with the first part of regulation where fatty acids are supplied. And next, to cool down your rumbling tummy, you yourself have to eat food. And we can compare this with the entry of fatty acids into the matrix. And I hope this becomes clear and easy to remember. Now coming to the final concluding part of beta oxidation, let's talk about defects. And uh, the only defect that we are going to discuss today is carnitine deficiency as it is linked with our case. 
So the most common defect here is carnitine deficiency and its symptoms include muscle weakness and muscle cramps. Now how is carnitine deficient? It can either be at the molecular level or at the genetic level wherein there is defect in its synthesis or defect in transport or there might be excess excretion which might eventually end up causing a deficiency of this carrier molecule. So now what happens if carotene is deficient? Number one, there is no transport of the activated fatty acyl CoA molecule which might cause the molecule to get converted back into tags. And number two, when there is no transport into the mitochondria, there is no energy production. And uh, when there is no energy provided to cells, the cells have to search for alternate ways of producing energy where they might degrade their own tissue proteins such as in the case of muscles. And as also seen in our case study, there was excess amount of creatine kinase leakage into circulation. This explains why muscle weakness and muscle cramps are seen in fatty acid depletion. And uh, one more point that I wanted to share was that hibernating animals provide a best example for utilizing fat reserves as fuel. For example, bears hibernate for about 7 months and during this entire period, the energy is derived from degradation of fat stores. And now isn't that something cool? So with this, I would like to conclude my topic by thanking the entire team of Oxyspire for providing students with such a wonderful program and I hope they come up with more of such initiatives and I thank my family for supporting me throughout the process and I would like to thank my friends through whom which I was introduced to this program and uh, last but not the least, I would like to thank all my viewers for your patience and I wish all of you the very best.